one of the things that I think investors often overestimate is how quickly Tesla is going to actually bring a full autonomous driving technology to market, a level three, level four, or level five, which is ultimately where Tesla wants to get driving technology to vehicles that they're going to be actually be able to use as robo taxis. And we found out last week that Tesla's robo taxi announcement, which Elon Musk said was going to happen on August 8th, is now delayed until at least October. The other thing that we found out is that Tesla wasn't actually going to unveil anything that was going to be available. They were building prototype vehicles. So they need a couple more months, months to build these prototype vehicles. What does that mean? That means that any real robo taxi is likely two, three, four years away from being a reality. At the same time, the technology behind the robo taxi concept, FSD, the product that Tesla has been selling to consumers for years, despite the fact that it isn't actually able to drive the vehicle itself. It is a level two autonomous assistant that has not advanced to level four or level five. There are companies that have deployed vehicles in the field. Companies like Waymo, which is owned by Alphabet. Companies like Cruise, which is owned by General Motors. Zooks, which is owned by Amazon. There are another half dozen or so companies in China. There's also Mobileye, which is developing technology that's going to go into Volkswagen vehicles. Everyone is moving forward on autonomy, and Tesla continues to drop the ball in actually deploying things that are going to live up to the promise that Elon Musk made going as far back as 2016. So this is just another example of that. And I think the challenge for investors is that so much of Tesla's value is built on the idea that this robo taxi idea is going to be a reality. But by the time it does become a reality, if it ever does, and those estimates are now moving out into 2030 and beyond, according to even some of the most bullish analysts on Wall Street, by 2030, we are going to have thousands, tens of thousands of fully autonomous vehicles from competitors already on the road. And that is going to be the fundamental problem for Tesla trying to get into a market that is already crowded. But I want to go through exactly what we know today and kind of put it into comparison to what other companies are doing. My name is Travis Holliam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's get to the initial announcement that came from Bloomberg. Bloomberg reported this on July 11th that Tesla is going to be delaying their event that was going to be happening on August 8th until at least October. The anticipation has had actually driven Tesla stock higher. This is the biggest reason that the stock was up over the last couple of months. Because when you look at the actual deliveries of electric vehicles, which I've covered here on this channel, EV sales are falling down. Deliveries were down 5% in the second quarter. That compares to companies like GM actually gaining on not only EV sales, but sales overall. Their sales were up about 1%. So Tesla is losing market share not only in EVs, but in vehicles overall. So that's the backdrop is that the core business is not doing all that well. So they need this autonomous, this robo-taxi promise to actually live up to expectations. But it's not. And like I said, analysts are now starting to question when this is actually going to happen. Guggenheim Securities Analyst said that they're not expecting any sort of full-scale launch until 2030. 2030 is six years away. We have no idea what is going to happen between now and 2030. So what does the actual environment look like on the ground today? Because I think that's important. What are companies actually producing today and what are they building from? I'm going to start with Cruise. Cruise is owned primarily by General Motors. They own about 80% of the company. This is a stock that I own. I like the business model that Cruise is putting into place. It's basically Uber, but it's just an autonomous vehicle. And they're actually designing a custom vehicle called the, called the Cruise Origin. That is delayed for right now. But the idea is that they're going to build out their own fleet. And it's going to be like Uber and operate in cities all over the world. This wouldn't be something that's going to drive you from California to New York, but it could replace your daily driver. So one of the criticisms for a company like Cruise is always that it's not level five autonomy. It's really only level four autonomy. Well, the question is, how quickly can those geofences get bigger and bigger? There are a few hundred square miles in the Phoenix area now for Waymo versus actually getting a level five autonomy system to actually work, which no one has ever actually done yet. So Cruise is one of the big players out there. Waymo is the other. Like I said, this is owned by Alphabet. But everything indicates that Waymo has probably the best technology in the industry today. But you're going to always have a business model challenge when you're part of Alphabet. They're just not all that great at deploying these new products into the field, even if they have the best technology. So are we going to see 
vehicles that look exactly like this or are we going to see a custom vehicle five or ten years from now it's just not clear they're partnering with uber so that is a way to, for them to get to a little bit more scale but definitely a technology leader just don't know if they're going to be a deployment leader long term zooks is the other one this is another company that started with making this kind of funky looking miniature bus this is very similar to what cruise was designing with the cruise origin and this is a company owned by Amazon. So again, plenty of money to pour into R&D. And they're starting to deploy these into the field in a few cities. I'll get to a little bit of that in Texas in just a second. And then you have Mobileye. Mobileye is more of a horizontal company. They're going to provide services to other automakers to deploy these products. But they're intending these to be available for robo-taxis, public transportation, delivery goods, all kinds of different vehicles. Volkswagen is the big name here for them to be deploying some of these projects and what their goal is to have a million hours without incident on a full level four autonomous driving system so that kind of puts the bar at where you would expect for an autonomous driving system thanks to our friends at the motley fool for sponsoring this video visit fool.com asym for the top 10 stocks to buy right now so i talked about looking at these companies and what we know today and what they're actually scaling from so start with what they are today and then where are they going in the foreseeable future? For right now, all we know about Tesla is that they have this level two autonomous system and they keep promising that they're just gonna make it level five and it's just gonna go from two to five, but there's no indication that it's anywhere safe enough to do that. They don't actually release their safety data and this is the big telling thing. They have a permit to test with a safety driver in the state of California. You can see this is the list of permit holders for driving with a safety driver. Tesla is on this list. There's a ton of companies on this list. They don't actually drive any miles in the state of California with a safety driver. So if they intended to release a level five autonomous system anytime in the foreseeable future, they would need to go through this process of actually testing the vehicle, showing that it's safe, and working with regulators to get this into the field. There are companies that are doing driverless testing, so no driver in the vehicle. Apollo, Neuro is a company that you may have heard of. They're the ones that were delivering pizzas around the San Francisco area. Waymo, a bunch of cities that they're able to operate day and night. I talked about Zooks earlier, the permit holders to actually deploy commercial operations. There's a few of these, Mercedes-Benz. They have some limitations on when they can operate and the speeds that they can operate. Neuro, Kind of the same thing. Waymo can actually go up to 65 miles an hour. And like I said, 24 hours a day. Cruise no longer operating after an accident that happened in October. I covered that here on this channel. But they are now starting to deploy in Texas and in Arizona. So if we look at the map of where some of these autonomous tests are happening in Texas, where things are actually being deployed, this little car signal, this is where we're going to want to look at. Which are the companies that are actually deploying in Texas. Crews deploying in Houston, they are active. Waymo, also in the Austin area. AV Ride, that's not a company that I was familiar with, but they are apparently operating in Austin. Zooks is operating in Austin. Volkswagen, remember that would be a partnership with Mobileye because Volkswagen is not doing its own autonomous systems, but it might be testing new vehicles that include some of those Mobileye systems on them. They're doing that in Austin. Go up to the Dallas area, you have Cruz, and this is another one from Cruz. So they're gonna be operating primarily in the Dallas area and Houston, those are the two cities that they've announced in Texas. What company is missing here? Tesla is missing. So despite the fact that they were their old headquarters was in California, now their headquarters is in Texas, they are not testing fully autonomous vehicles in either of those states. I know that I get pushback every time I do one of these videos about Tesla not actually being an autonomous driving leader, but I think when you actually look at the data, what companies are actually deploying in the field, what they're saying to regulators, what they're reporting to regulators, you see that there are a number of companies that are way ahead of Tesla in this, autonomous, in this pursuit of autonomous driving. Tesla has an idea of what it's going to do in autonomy. They want to use a vision-only system to build a level five autonomous driving vehicle. They haven't yet made prototypes of what that robo taxi would look like, but that's the ultimate goal for the company. But there are a number of problems with that. It's never been proven that you can do that using artificial intelligence, which is what they're trying to do. One of the criticisms that resonates with me that Mobileye put out there was with an AI system, if you have an accident, you have an incident, and you go into that system and say, why did this happen? What needs to be fixed? With an AI system, you just simply don't know. They don't know 
what the solution is going to be, except to put more data into the training model. I don't know that that's going to be a satisfactory solution for automakers or for regulators. There's also no redundancies. This is going to be a vehicle that could hurt people. And you want to have redundancies. You have redundancies in aircrafts. You have redundancies in, from a safety perspective with vehicles. You have a parking brake if your brakes go out. An autonomous driving system with no redundancies to me is just crazy. So not only does the actual robo-taxi and the technology to drive a vehicle fully autonomously not exist at Tesla, the vehicle to be a robo-taxi does not exist. They are not currently working with regulators. They are at least multiple years away from actually launching any sort of robo-taxi because they are going to have to get over these regulatory hurdles. And even then you get to the business model question, Will they be able to make money? Will people buy robo taxi vehicles and then go deploy them to make a few dollars like they do with Uber? I question that. I think it's going to be a much more effective business model to actually build out your fleet, build it with custom vehicles, the way that Cruise, the way that Waymo is doing, mobilize working with a couple of, couple of companies to do this as well. Then you have control of the fleet. You can fully utilize it at peak hours. You can utilize it for other purposes like delivering products in off peak hours. There's a bunch of business models that you could potentially open up if that fleet of vehicles exists. It's now starting to exist in a few cities in the U.S. and is expanding almost every single day. So those are the companies that I would bet on in autonomous driving because they are actually deploying in the field. They are actually working with regulators. They are actually showing that their autonomous driving systems are safe and effective. Tesla is not doing any of those things today. And that is ultimately why I would worry about investing in Tesla at a valuation that is multiples higher than buying each one of these companies on their own. From an investment perspective, we're looking for upside. Where is the upside? The upside is buying General Motors and getting crews for free. The upside is buying Mobileye and that becoming the go-to technology for Volkswagen and all of its brands for a number of Chinese brands like Geely. They could be in millions of vehicles over the next few years. The upside is even Waymo, which is owned by Alphabet, being basically a throw in with Alphabet and eventually becoming a huge business on its own, whether it's maybe sold to Uber or continues to partner with Uber. They have at least the technology to drive this industry forward. I just don't see Tesla having that position today. I know there are a lot of investors that disagree with that, but until they actually prove that there is a robo taxi on the road, I'm going to want Tesla to prove it and I'm not going to be willing to pay a premium to get the product that doesn't yet exist. But what do you think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.